everybody and or welcome back to the Pottery Corner for yet another uh, glaze kiln opening. We have had lots of work to get through the kiln so uh, following my video the other day the marbled mugs and some of the aprons are listed uh, in the shop so if you want to go and take a look at that the website address is www.thepotterycorner.com dot co dot uk um, so those pieces are on there um, as you can see the kiln shelves still look as full as they did the other day we're now day 87 of the uh, covid 19 lockdown or partial lockdown as we should probably say now so um, another kiln firing there is students work and there's a shelf of my work in here so have had a sneaky peek at the top as I usually do um, but we'll have a look and see what we've got so here we go up comes the lid uh, this is completely cold now um, I was going to do the video last night ran out of time so um, in here Karen first off uh, Karen made this it's a pressed um, fish shaped dish and she used some I think she called them crackles. I don't actually know what they are, but they looked like glass frit. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they are, but I shall be finding out because she's used Amoco's ice, I think, um, as the background glaze and placed the crackles or frit or whatever you want to call it. I don't think it can be glass on its own because I think if it was, it would have it would have kind of moved further than it has. So I hope you can see that, Karen. It's really very interesting, nice colour, nice spread of crystals, whatever you want to call them, um, actually turned out really nicely. So I'm sure you'll be using some more of that. Yeah, very successful, jolly nice, well done. Now, Louise, I know you're absolutely ecstatically excited and so you should be. This is the first of your bowls. They are all in this kiln um, and they are all standing on... Um, uh, kiln props because you have glazed right the way over so I just need to um, file these little points on here it's the only way to to glaze something all over so the back is blue I can't remember the combination I do know there's blue lagoon on there I think it might be blue rutile over the top um, and then on the inside we've got river rock with arctic blue and then jasper on the rim so that's the first of them. We'll see what the others are like as we get further down the kiln. So that's top shelf. Um, I didn't have anything else that was flat enough to join those things, unfortunately. So we had a little bit of wasted space, but not very much. Uh, right, so this is my shelf. And I'm going to take the props out. Yes, because props don't win prizes, as we know. So let's take those out. Just because I hate it when they drop on things. Right, so where shall we start? In here are two of the Tudor jugs, um, which I did a video on a little while ago uh, before I, um, when I hadn't finished making them. So this is two of the Tudor jugs. This is the first one. This is iron fleck clay. So it's got like a, a fleck in the actual clay that makes it look sort of oatmeal-y. And I've just put a transparent on the inside. And then on the outside um, are three good coats of Amico's um, Celadon Storm. Um, and it's actually come out slightly darker on this clay than it would normally, but actually still very nice. Happy with that. Pretty, nice size jug, very useful. I mean, you could put flowers in it. For that matter, you could put custard in it, whatever takes your fancy. Um, so that's the first one of those. This is the second of them. This one is, again, it's, they're all in the iron fleck clay, so they have the flecks on the, on the inside. I hope you can see those. They're, you know, it makes an interesting little feature inside. And this one is Amoco's Obsidian underneath Amoco's Indigo Float. So it's a really beautiful deep blue. Um, and where the um, Indigo Float has held on the on the texture, you've got sort of like an, a lighter blue. I really like that. It's nice. Handle's nice. The um, decoration is nice. And again, that's that's a pretty good sized jug. I mean, you could use it as a water jug on the table. Very nice. Lovely, lovely colour glaze. Pardon me. Excuse me. Lovely glaze. 
nice texture, nice decoration. So yeah, happy with that one too. That's very good. I've got a couple more on the shelf here, just waiting to be glazed. Right, next thing, let's do the mugs. As you know, I've been making marbled mugs. Oh, lovely. This is, um, this one is uh, raspberry stain and banana yellow stain and coral. Um, and it's, it's actually a really lovely combination with uh, Amoco Weeping Plum uh, Celadon uh, glaze on a lace molded handle. And inside, <laughs> I was having really good fun with this ombre business. It's actually almost, it almost looks like I've glazed it in a pink, in a pink glaze, but I haven't glazed it at all. It's just got um, transparent on it, but it, it's really nice inside, it's pink. So that is, is really very, very pretty and, and a lovely combination of stains. So yes, very, very happy with that one. Lovely mug, fits nice in the hand. As I said before, when you hold them, they feel nice. So that's the first of those. This is the second of those. This one's actually even nicer. The marbling is nicer on it. So, and this one has the cable handle like we had before. Again, weeping plum. Um, nice, very nice. And again, nice in the hand, good size. Get a reasonable um, cup of coffee or cup of tea in there. I'll put these up on the shop um, if you want to go and have a look at those later or even tomorrow, depending on how much time I have today. Uh, now these are wheel thrown stoneware uh, vases, which I have put uh, Nerikomi uh, roundels on. So I've I've made some roundels with the coloured clay. I think this one looks like uh, lime and orange and sepia on these roundels. And then I've um, made some dimples, nice little dimples. Some of them I've filled with marbling of the same colour and some of them I have left as dimples. And these vases, this shape, this kind of conical shape, really is really nice for cut flowers out of the garden that don't have very long stems. So, you know, your roses, typically you only get a stem about this long, fit perfectly in these and they look really nice. So again, I'll, I'll list those on the, on the shop later. Very, very pretty, happy with that. Very nice indeed. Uh, the second one of those, the same shape, is this one. Ooh, we like. So the roundels on this one are black and I presume that's coral and sepia in the middle, I think. Looks like it anyway. So when I've, I've thrown this on the wheel and then when it was leather dry, leather hard, I've just pressed in um, a round shape so that I can add a slice of Nerikomi on the top and then turned it um, to get it flat so that it looks like it, it, it's part of the surface of the clay. So, and again, nice dimples on this one. This one I left just dimples and actually I really like that. That's, that's very pretty. Lovely little vase. Very happy with that. So that's, that's a goodie. That's a goodie altogether. Um, same theme, but straight sided this time. This one has just three Nerikomi uh, roundels on the front of the vase, which is sepia and raspberry and um, orange. So that's really nice. Again, a good size. Be nice with daffodils in it or bluebells or, you know, something like that. That would be very nice. And then the last of mine, this is, um, again, same theme. Get a theme and then play with it. That's what I tend to do. This one is, um, I can't remember the, the exact mix. It looks like black with um, sepia or honey. Actually, I think that might be honey and uh, orange in the middle, burnt orange in the middle. And again, same thing. You can see from the inside where I've pressed to get the roundels in on the front, although the roundels are flat on the, on the actual surface. You can see where I've pressed them in from the outside. So yes, and again, a nice, a lo lovely vase. Actually, it's, it's quite sort of modernist, that one. Um, probably more modern than most of the things that I make. Right, so we'll just get the cookies out. I don't want to make too much time. Put those over there. And then we'll lift this shelf out. And underneath here are more, actually three of uh, Louise's bowls. 
so let's get those out. Oh, we don't want those falling anywhere. Right, so Louise, here's some more of your bowls. And um, again, I'll just take the prop off. So the back of that one's nice. And actually it matches the other one very well. So colour wise, you've got a nice um, colour pulled across there. The Jasper's nice on the rim. There are a few pinholes, but unfortunately there's not a lot you can do about that if that happens. Um, but it's nice on the texture on the rim. You've got um, heart stamps on there and actually that's come out really nicely. So the texture on the on the rim is showing. So that's number two. And this is number three. Now oh, the prop's come off that one. So again, very similar. Nice. Number four. I'll get that off in a minute. That one's nice. Nice on the back. The blue is nice. As I say, I can't actually remember what that is, but um, I think it's... Uh, I think it's Blue Lagoon and Blue Rutard, but I could be wrong. I have to ask Louise. Um, that one needs its uh, little thingy um, getting off the kiln prop. But again, that won't take anything to knock that off. And then the last shelf in the bottom here has... Let's get the props out. Prop, prop, prop. Two of Karen's little coasters. These were, I think, Smoky Merlot. You'll tell me if I'm wrong, Karen. So those are nice. Um, well, students tend to make coasters if they have 10 or 15 minutes left at the end of their session just to, you know, use the time. So, um, and then these are mine and they're little, just little um, ring dishes or votive candle dishes or whatever, but they're, they're leaf shape. And then I've got a stamp that makes this kind of leaf pattern. So. Those have been made just with a, a bit of leftover marbled clay that I've just mixed together. So they're, they've they only got uh, transparent on, but again, they've got a bit of colour to them. So those are sweet. Um, and then the last two things in here are the last of uh, Louise's bowls. Again, very consistent colour for a set. That's the inside of that one. The Jasper's pulled quite nicely on the rim of this one. And again, the texture on the rim with the uh, with the hearts is really good. So that's a goodie. And the last one is this one. The prop. And again, that one's good too. So you've got a nice consistent colour of glaze on those, Louise. Um, so they're very nice. So I hope you'll be happy with those. I shall... Uh, message you and you can come pick those up so um what else to say uh we have been busy sorting out the studio trying to get the students back so we're, we're still working on that we're having i'm having one-to-ones with students at the moment um but I, i'm hoping that we can have two in the studio and uh, then we'll take that forward from there and see where we're going um if you want to continue watching my YouTube videos, subscribe below and then it, it'll notify you when there's a new video to watch. Um, I have been making some more uh, split fronted aprons. This is um, a bit of a change from the others. This one's a red polka dot and this one's got some vintage buttons on it uh, with the, the green detail to match the, the, the um, straps. So, as I said before, you know, this is when you're actually sitting at the wheel and it keeps the clay off your trousers, which I have to say is very useful because you do get very, very messy doing throwing. Um, yeah, so perfecting new things in terms of uh, trying out new styles of things. That's another apron there. Um, not really much else to say other than I shall be busy reloading the kiln again to try and get these things through this is joe's second poppy head she did we had the last one in the last kiln though so i'm hoping i might be able to get that through by saturday when i see her no promises but we'll see what the weather's doing because of course we need a nice day for the solar now you people who have been watching my youtube videos will know that i can't seem to trim the last six seconds off the end of the video where i say gopro blah 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 
I won't do it right now because of course then it will cut me off. So I thought instead of spending over an hour trying to trim six seconds off the end of the video, I'd just make a little thing about it. So just to cover website www.thepotterycorner.co.uk, uh, Instagram is the.pottery.corner and the Facebook page is The Pottery Corner. So as I say, information about um, items for sale in the shop, information on courses also on there, but obviously they're not running as they would be at the moment. Um, but other than that, everything's hunky-dory down here <coughs> in the kiln room <coughs> and upstairs in the studio uh, near Chichester, West Sussex, south of England. Um, and I'll say bye for now. And then instead of trimming the six seconds, I'll say GoPro stop video and it didn't do it. So now I have to tell it to do it again. GoPro stop video. And it's still not doing it, so I'll have to press the button. Bye, everybody.